Hello dear, welcome to English Needs channel. In this video, you are going to learn about some difficult expressions that are given in the lesson, The Gift of the Magi. O. Henry has written this story very well, but the language he has used is a bit difficult for average students. So, in this video, I have concentrated on those portions where normally students find it difficult to understand the lines there. If you are keen reader, if you have the mindset to learn everything better or to understand each and everything and learn English better, then this video is going to be very good for you. So, let's get into those aspects. Penny saved one or two at a time by bulldozing the grocer and the vegetable man and the butcher until one's cheeks burned with the silent imputation of parsimony that such close dealing implied. Close dealing means asking a person to reduce a very little amount, maybe a penny or two. Parsimony means being stingy. Silent imputation of parsimony means showing silently the meanness or the stinginess of Della. When the seller shows such discord, definitely it puts the lady into shame and because of that her cheeks turned pink. A furnished flat at $8 per week. It didn't exactly beggar description, but it certainly had that word on the lookout for the mendicancy square. Mendicancy square means the policemen who find beggars and arrest them. Beggars always watched for this square so that they can escape from the arrest. So, the better word that can be used is beggar. And finally, the expression means it is possible to say James's house as poor man's house. The Dillingham flung to the breeze during the former period of prosperity when its possessor was being paid $30 per week. The name Dillingham was written on the name board that was hung on the wall outside the vestibule. The name Dillingham was suitable so long as James got $30 per week. But now as he is getting $20 per week, he wants to cut short it to only D. A thin and agile person may, by observing his reflection in the rapid sequence of longitudinal strips, obtain a fairly accurate conception of his looks. Della, being slender, had mastered the art. This means the mirror was long and narrow. It had many longitudinal strips in it because the quality was bad. Only a thin person could see his reflection completely. That means if a fat person stands in front of this mirror, he won't be able to see the complete reflection. As Della was slim and she could manage to see her in that mirror. Had the Queen of Sheba lived in the flat across the air shaft, Della would have let her hair hang out the window some day to dry just to depreciate Her Majesty's jewels and gifts. This expression means if Queen Sheba lived in the opposite flat, Della would have shown her hair while drying them after the shower, you can say, to say that her hair is more precious than the jewels and gifts that belonged to the Queen. That means Della is very much proud of her hair and she wants to show it to Queen Sheba. Had the King Solomon been the janitor, with all his treasure piled up in the basement, Jim would have pulled out his watch every time he passed, just to, to see him 
pluck at his beard from envy. This means if King Solomon was the caretaker of the apartment and piled up his treasure at the basement, Jim wouldn't have cared to look at the treasure. He would rather take out his watch and looked at his watch because it is a great treasure for him. By this act, he would make King Solomon surprised and feel jealous about Jim for possessing that watch. And then she did it up again nervously and quickly. Once she faltered for a minute and stood still, while a tear or two splashed on worn out red carpet. Did it up again means folded back her hair because before this she had taken out the clip and the hair fell down to reach her knees. Della decided to sell her hair. She folded back her hair and put the clip. She hesitated for a minute and stood still. She is going to lose her most valuable thing, her hair. So, she became emotional and tears rolled from her eyes and dropped on the old red carpet. Oh, and the next two hours tripped by on rosy wings. Forget the hashed metaphor. She was ransacking the stores for Jim's present. O. Henry says that the line next two hours tripped by on the rosy wings is a mixed metaphor that is not properly presented. So, the reader may ignore the line. He means to say that the next two hours passed by very quickly. Della went into many shops and searched for the gift meticulously. Her intoxication gave way a little to prudence and reason. She got out her curling irons and lighted the gas and went to work repairing the ravages made by generosity added to love. Normally, intoxication is a state after consuming liquor. In Hindi, we say Nasheme. Here it means Della was in a very happy mood when she returned home. When she thought of her short hair and a possible wild reaction from Zim, she becomes prudent and wants to curl her hair so that it looks better. Generosity added to love means sacrificing wholeheartedly her hair for love. For 10 seconds, let us regard with discreet scrutiny some inconsequential object in the other direction. The author tells the reader to consider closely and think in a different way though it is not so important. Eight dollars a week or a million a year, what is the difference? A mathematician or a wit would give you the wrong answer. The Magi brought many gifts, but that was not there. The meaning of this expression is, the thing to be considered is value here. The value of things should not be considered on its monetary cost. Emotional value is also important. To make it some more clear, a mathematician or a wit can tell the difference between $8 per week and a million a year by a simple calculation. But the author says that he would be wrong, his answer would be wrong because the mathematician thinks about only the number. Though Mathematically, it is correct, calculated correctly, but he says it is wrong because the element of emotion is missing there. A poor man may be rich in other aspects. Sacrifice and love are the greatest assets of a man. White fingers nimble tore at the string and paper, and then an ecstatic joy, and then alas. A quick feminine change to hysterical tears and wails, necessitating the immediate employment of all the comforting powers of the lord of the flat. 
Here, Lord of the flat is Jim. Della removed the string and tore the paper of the gift box. Della screamed with joy, but the next moment changed quickly as women often do. She started crying madly. Jim had to use all his consoling power to console and comfort Della. For a complete story in English, there is a video in this channel. Please watch it. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for being my subscriber. Please be in touch with me. Thank you.